Hey guys, today I'm working on this My Passport Ultra that a friend of mine brought in. Uh, just basically wanted to give you a full uh, rundown of what usually happens when we get these hard drives in full recovery. Uh, let's start off with just plugging it in so I can show you the basic symptoms that this drive is going through and uh, maybe those symptoms can be related to the problem that you're having. I'm just plugging it into my MacBook uh, for test, nothing else really, no work will be done on it, just to show you what the drive is doing when it's plugged in. I can feel that it starts spinning up and then we get this disk you inserted was not readable by this computer. Initialize, ignore, or eject. We're gonna hit ignore. And then I'm gonna run our studio. Let's see what our studio will show. So over on this side where all the devices are, let me just blow this up. Uh, we got our passport uh, and it's got one untitled partition on there, uh, but it doesn't detect what type of partition it is. Uh, if we go into a hex view, let's say uh, by uh, going into view and edit, hex view and edit, um, this is what the drive is demonstrating that it consists of. So it looks like there is data on there, but for some reason it's not detecting. Gonna disconnect this unit and uh, have a look what's on the inside. So this is a three terabyte device, and the three terabyte device belongs to uh, Pebble B family. But, uh, this device has a native USB 3.0 connector on a PCB. We'll need to have this board cloned out and uh, converted to SATA. So we have uh, two PCBs here. One of them is USB interface. Another one is SATA interface. They both are from the same family. So they should be compatible. The only difference between the the two is the content of uh, EEP ROM. So we're gonna copy EEP ROM chip from our patient and record it to uh, the donor. Now, adaptation of the donor could be done in several ways, including a physical transplant of the chip itself, but uh, the location of the chip surrounds it with MPU and um, RAM, which we definitely don't want to uh, interfere with and overheat because uh, they're it's very easy to warp these boards. They're really, really thin. In order to avoid any um, technical issues with the board itself, as those boards are not cheap, uh, we're gonna use non-invasive way of uh, adaptation. Now, non-invasive way could be either done through the terminal or through the programmer. I'm gonna use the programmer today to make that adaptation happen. And I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. The programmer comes with software that you see on the screen. And uh, all we need to do is establish a full continuous connection between the Pogo pin adapter and eight pins on the EEP ROM chip by pushing it down. We gotta actually start with the patient because we have to read it out. I'm gonna go ahead and detect. Gives us ID and then we just read it out. Once it's read, we have it. We don't need to use this board anymore. Just line it up for the, for the target. Now this is the part where we gotta be really patient and keep the head in very steady. We're at uh, 50 percent, 60, 70, 80, and 100. 
Now I'm just going to go through a quick verification, make sure everything is correct. And when we get this message, we're done. Now the board can go back on our device. I'm going to get up to channel 0 on PC3000. So we get the busy signal. The drive is spinning up. So it picks up on the family right away. Auto detect, detects as Pebble B. This is when we're going to take all the uh, uh, backups of the firmware. Okay, now that the backup is made and uh, ready, we just going to go ahead and do all the preparation for the disk imaging. If we have a look at the sector access, we can see that the drive has not been encrypted, so we can just image it the way it is. But in order to avoid any uh, unpleasant surprises during the imaging, we want to make sure that the um, uh, drive is prepped in a way that it's not going to cause any issues. I'm going to go into modules directory. I'm going to look at a couple of modules. First module we want to look at is uh, number 32. Fill it with zeros. Then we want to look at the module number 34. 34 is clean from what I can tell, but let's just double check. Fill zeros. Nothing to change, but let's just double check. Uh, and uh, last but not least, we want to have a look at module number two. Under features, we want to. Disable all of the uh, offline activity and go into the smart. We don't need smart for this part of the project. Also modified. Good. So now that the drive is prepped, we're going to switch into uh, data extractor. So SATA0 is going to be our source. Make data copy and we're going to make it onto this drive. Build a head map. This will show us which heads are in use during the imaging process. And uh, also, we'll be able to monitor the speed and performance of individual heads based on uh, the data that uh, the software produces. If uh, there is any uh, lag or any issue related to uh, uh, one of the heads repeatedly, then we can find what the better course of action would be based on that information. So usually if it's uh, if one of the heads is not doing so well, we would uh, disable it until everything else is captured and then put it back in use after everything else is, has been cloned out and imaged to uh, our uh, target drive. So going forward from here, we can just fire up an image based on uh, stock settings just for the entire volume and uh, looking at this info here I can see that all heads perform really well. If we go into uh, status it gives us the speed of over 100 megabytes steady which uh, indicates no head issues. Um, maybe the drive was having some problems at the beginning. Let's have a look at the 
structure. So it's got an NTFS partition on there. Uh, best course of action in this situation would be to uh, clone the whole thing so that it's not uh, forcing the problematic drive to um, work over time. And once the image is created, uh, especially since all heads run really well, uh, we can run a full partition analysis to rebuild the original file structure and <coughs> copy the content out. I don't think it's going to be too late to do that at this point. Most likely, the drive just started to have uh, first signs of slow response. And during um, startup by accident or maybe in hopes of uh, <laughs> fixing itself, maybe the owner pressed something to initialize the device and uh, it maybe didn't even get a chance to finish it. Maybe it started up, he disconnected it quickly because um, based on what I see here, there is definitely data on the device. So let's clone it out and after the clone is done, We'll just have to analyze the partition and get the data out that way. If you have any questions, uh, post them in the comments below. I uh, hope you like this presentation. If you have any special requests on what you want to see in the future episodes, also drop that in comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.